Okay, good afternoon guys uh, and girls. Welcome to August the 2nd, Monday, August the 2nd, quarter past 12 London time. If you can hear me and if you can see my charts, could you just type a Y in the room? Just so I know to crack on. Great stuff. I hope you're all well and I hope you had a good weekend. The, uh, well, nice weather in London continuing really, not perhaps as good as it has been, but really can't complain on the summer as a whole. What we can complain about, perhaps, is a lack of consistency and direction in the market. Last week, I know all of you would have been reading our market reports, we were neutral on the E-mini S&P four out of five days. And in fact, the market finished three ticks lower than where it started the week prior. So a very, very indecisive market. And again, I've been talking about the range that the E-mini is in. And you can see this from a slightly longer term chart. Sideways movement, slightly grinding high, although last week was a slight down tick, but very, very inconsistent. And one of the patterns that keeps on replicating itself, um, certainly in recent times, are these N shapes in the market, so a sharp move higher, then a move lower, or the U shapes, reversal of that. And I think that has summed up the indecision that's out there at the moment. Let's have a look at last week. Why is there in this indecision? Why is there this lack of consistent uh, movement. Well, the data is mixed. Last week we had good homes data. Um, on the face of it we had good jobless claims. At the same, same time we had bearish durable goods figures and a bearish consumer confidence figure and that was on the Tuesday. Then on the Friday we had GDP from the US. Um, again, this really summed up that data. It was on the front of it a negative reading, although not as bad as the rumours. And their last GDP figure was revised upwards. That very rarely happens with GDP. Normally once you've had the three readings um, of the Q1, for example, it stays that way. But in high volatility and high uncertainty you can get an extra revision and that's what happened. And um, that was a positive revision. And that really summed up, I think, the, uh, the movement last week in terms of different data coming out, negating moves that we saw prior. And again, here you can see one of those U shapes in the mini S&P that I've been talking about going over the last couple of days. So that was Friday. Really, the focus was on GDP. Um, the overall result was for the market to have moved higher after a push lower. So interesting market action, but certainly still within the range we've been talking about and not too far away from the 11.10 mark where we are now. Again, on top of GDP, we had Chicago PMI and Michigan Consumer Confidence, and these both came out positive on Friday, if you remember. And I think added to that, the revision of last quarter's GDP, it just gave us that final little bit of confidence that we needed to continue the grind higher. So let's have a look at today. What are we planning for the E-mini S&P? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you guys, but it's actually neutral again. And the reason being is we're expecting ISM manufacturing to come out later. I'll talk about this uh, later on. But we don't believe that the US macroeconomic data has really found its path. It's a bit of a mixed hodgepodge at the moment. There's no consistent trend in the data. So our, our trend is neutral. We're still looking for an entry long on a technical point of view to join that trend. And that entry long is at 110.450 here. Um, with the stop at 10.99.25, we're actually near our target entry point. Obviously, the entry here far too early for you guys. Um, but very often, as what happens with Andrea's level, the target exit point is a target because it's a resistance in its own right in this case. So bear that in mind. Just to cover, guys, what happened over the weekend. Well, we had Greenspan. He, I mean, I don't know why he's still getting involved. Um, surely it's it's time for him to, to stick to uh, stick to his games of bridge. But anyway, he was wheeled out in front of uh, in front of the media to declare that the recovery of the banks were the recovery was underway, but the banks were the main benefactors. That's not a surprise at all. Um, and also, there was nothing that the U.S. could do to adjust its rate of unemployment. Uh, also over the weekend you had Harvard's scholar Neil Ferguson comment on the dollar and the reason why I'm pointing this out is it's quite interesting. Um, the general weakness on the dollar uh, becoming a uh, topic of discussion at the moment as this macroeconomic data remains uncertain. So this guy Neil Ferguson from Harvard is saying that the dollar could lose its reserve currency status within five years. This trend has really already happened in private sector terms but is yet to be actioned on the public front. Um, I think it's, you know, the media loves bad news stories and it always over-exaggerates them. I mean, 
that none of us is old enough in this room to remember, but sterling was the reserve currency, and it took two world wars and debt levels of three times the US is at the moment to take us off the reserve ratio. There are talks about a potential, as a theoretical idea, uh, return to the gold standard, a demand for gold, replacing the demand for paper currency, and of course this is all pie in the sky at the moment, but it's an interesting theoretical debate if demand for the dollar does subside. If cash moves into gold with a, with a vengeance, then I think the deflationary impact would make the 1930s look uh, mild in comparison, so it's not a situation worth contemplating at the moment. But back to the nearer term, guys. What have we had today? Well, overall, it's been a bit positive, actually. We've had PM, PMI numbers from the EU. Uh, Italian manufacturing, for example, 54.8 versus 54.3. Many of the other EU nations as well, very positive, including Germany. Um, the only slight disappointment was the French PMI. Not because the headline rate didn't beat the expectations, but because compared to the last figure, this was actually a 10-month low on the French manufacturing PMI. So the only concern in the Eurozone in France at the moment, uh, Germany was fantastic, 61.2, in line with e expectation, but that was a nice high expectation. Let's have a look at what's happened to the Euro on the back of that news. As you know, following Andrea's strategy, we've also been neutral the Euro over the last few days. This direction still not really gaining underway. Um, I would say, although there's the $31.30 handle, and we are above it now, we're, you know, we're consolidating those gains above it, but that important level is still very much in the picture. Our entry for the euro today, $1.3027, uh, looking for an exit of $1.3125. What about oil? Well, oil in itself has held on to some good gains, and you can see we're actually right just below the all-important $80 handle. And for those of you who remember earlier on in the year when we were seeing confidence come back into the commodity markets or risk assets, $80 was an important level for oil because it was thought by traders any moves higher in oil above the $80 mark is not seen as a um, increase in risk appetite and therefore correlating to higher stocks. It's actually seen as deflationary concerns, inflationary concerns, I apologize, inflationary concerns. I think that's less of the case now. I don't think the $80 barrier is, import, is as important as it was earlier on in the year, but you can see just acting as a bit of resistance here. Big news out this morning, guys, in the pound, actually. Um, I talked about Eurozone PMI, but it's also the UK manufacturing data came out, and it came out fantastic. And have a look at, have a look at this chart off the pound this morning. There's the G GBP against the USD spot, uh, just being held by R2. Really good news. Not only did we have good manufacturing data coming out of the UK, but we also had some news on the UK's leading banks, and they're, they're doing fantastically well. So the British currency strengthened to its highest level in four weeks versus the euro. Um, manufacturing sector in the UK expanded for the 10th straight month. I mean three, four months ago, before the coalition government sort of found its feet, the UK was really being written off. I remember an article written by the French bank BNP Paribas saying that by voting for the coalition, the UK had voted for its own downgrade. I remember being quite irked by that title, UK votes for downgrade. Now it's the UK that is looking good and the French data that's holding back, so that's interesting. Well, we've got HSBC, they reported their results, great results, and of course, a large part, not HSBC, sorry, but a large part of the other banks being owned by the uh, by the UK taxpayer, including RPS. Does anyone know what percentage of RBS is government owned? Well, it's 83% is owned by the UK government. They're going to report slightly less uh, profits, 120 million, but that's much better than the 1 billion lost from last year. So really good news coming out of the UK. The pound's absolutely loving it. Um, UK manufacturing data, 10th up month in a row, is, is fantastic, and you can see what's happened to the pound. I think the bad news in the UK was uh, perhaps overdone. Um, traders and investors were...